Okay, so let's look at another way of doing these things. We'll look at uh, pie charts. Okay, so pie chart. Um, actually, it's really easy to draw a pie chart. It's almost easier to draw a pie chart than it is to draw a, a bar chart because apart from reading in the data, we can just do plt.py <coughs> data.sum and the labels as the data columns. And then we can even create a legend. So you'll see each, each column here uh, is given a different color, although there's a limit to the number of colors. I think it's about 10. So uh, it goes round again. So that gives us then a, uh, a, a picture of a pie chart for the data. So and we just use plt.py with the, uh, uh, the data.sum to give the, the size of each pie section. Uh, and the legend, as I say, is the list of the pie segments. Uh, that's put there. And we can, we can change the location. Location 2 is, is to the left-hand side. OK, um, as before, we can improve our pie chart so we can color the segments according to their whether they're high, low, medium, very low volume. That actually is quite helpful in this case because it's, it's, it's easier to understand what's going on in the pie chart there. So this uses exactly the same code as example 7. Um, it's, it's better than the previous example because the, the previous example really doesn't show you it's very hard to distinguish what's going on, but uh, it still doesn't tell you very much about what's going on because, of course, you end up with two. You can end up um, with two columns that are the same, the same thing. So all those uh, orange ones, I think, can all end up together, and then you can't see all the you can't see all the data. So uh, the alternatively, you could group all the low volume products uh, as we did in example nine so that let me actually let me run that one because it's a bit hard to see that so this as i say uses the same code as example nine where we grouped all the low volume very sorry very low product very, very low volume products together and that gives us you can see now as i go around the the, the pi starts a then d e f and so on Anything that's very low volume, though, is taken out. <clears throat> so you can see that B and C, E, F, G, H, I, I is taken out. J, K is taken out. They're, they're all added together and they're, they're put into this group of others uh, on the right-hand side. Uh, that's better, but it's still not particularly illuminating. Um, so the final example is, is, I think, the best example of the pie charts. This does all the techniques that we've got um, so far. Um, so we first of all, we sort them uh, so that the pie charts are in order of the pie segments are in order of decreasing size. Let me let me show you this running. OK, there you go. They're sorted. So F comes first, then A, then L and so on. Um, we've also done grouping, so all the very low volume ones are grouped together in this others column, sorry, others pie segment, okay, uh, up the top there, and um, we're labeling each segment, that's really helpful, again, I'll show, let me show you the, the, the actual output, you can see this, the, the size of each segment, so you can see that F, all the sales from product F, uh, account for 18.6% and the sales from product A account from 18.4%. So that's 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 much easier to judge whether A F and A are bigger or the same size because we can just look at them numerically. Um, what else are we doing? Um, we set the start angle to 90 degrees. Now that that's um, not essential, but actually it it just helps with the visualization. So it's it's a common practice to put the the biggest one at the top. So we start at the top uh, rather than starting uh, here on the you know, sort of uh, at uh, three o'clock. OK. Um, and then to highlight one of the segments, we can explode it. And by explode, I mean it just pushes the segment, the pie segment out from the center. And you can see uh, the code in bold is doing those things. So the auto PCT. Um, there is doing the labeling. The start angle is 90 degrees, so that's push, That's starting the, the pie chart at the top. And the explode list, the explode list um, is just a list of the segments that you want to, to be exploded. So let me show you the code for that. 
Uh, there it is, the explode list. Um, I think I've just put... Yeah, explode list. I've, I've added all the columns into the explode list, all the ones that are... Um, Sorry, no, the explode list, I've forgotten how it works. The explode list just tells you how far each Pi segment is pushed out. So all the segments, all the normal segments are pushed out zero. Sorry, I forgot how that works because I never, I very, very rarely use pie charts. Explode list keeps all the segments uh, in the center, except for the others, which is pushed out by 0.05. So it pushes that out a little bit. And that's, uh, so that list, the explode list has to match the number of uh, segments we're putting in the pie, and only the, the last one gets pushed out. Okay, um, that makes it much clearer, and you can argue that that's that's kind of the best we can do with a pie chart. And and for that reason, pie charts aren't aren't very popular in the world of data visualization. We're not very good as humans at, at evaluating those relative sizes of the segments. It's much, much easier to compare the relative heights of the bar chart columns. So if you look at this pie without the numbers, uh, you can't really tell if F is bigger than A, other than the fact we know it is because it comes first in the um, in the pie. But it could it could just be, it could be exactly the same size, and then we, we can't really tell that. Okay, um, so we're not very good at evaluating different sizes, whereas we're very good at evaluating different heights of bar chart columns. Um, if you're really determined to use a pie chart, however, uh, make sure you include the percentages because that then at least uh, means that everything is labeled. Start with the biggest segment at the top and sort in order of size, uh, like we did on that last example. And, and don't use more than 10 to 20 segments. It just, as you can see, even on that, that example there, uh, the ones as we get near to the uh, near to the top again, so as we work our way around, the ones they are getting closer and closer together and that, that text is get, getting less and less readable because it's all squashed up together. So uh, don't use too many segments because it makes them hard to read. Okay, I'm going to finish this um, this video here on pie charts and then we'll, we'll just summarize the lecture in the last one.